In part two, we'll look at how to create side-by-side -side maps as well as create an atlas or map book. So why create side-by-side -side maps? Well, a brief article in ArcWatch highlights three key reasons, to detect changes, to make comparisons, and study relationships. They can be web-based or paper, we'll focus on paper, and they can use either vector or raster data. So I've had trouble finding suggestions for side-by-side -side maps or finding any sort of cartographic reference. So here are a few suggestions. Feel free to pause the video here. Um, again, these are just some general suggestions as I look through a couple dozen side-by-side -side maps. You can use side-by-side -side maps to look at changes in land cover over time, the extent of point clustering, heart disease by different variables like gender or poverty, and look at different types of data. And as alternatives to side-by-side -side maps, you can use animations and overlay. So for our project, we're going to be looking at the Salton Sea in California. It's the largest lake in California, and we'll be looking at different bands uh, from remote sensing. And we'll just create uh, a simple map with uh, three different bands shown on the same print composer. So we'll go ahead and we'll click off this layer and go back to the original natural color image. Then we'll go up to Project, uh, New Print Composer, and give our project a name. We'll just call it Map of the Salton Sea, and click OK. So the first things we're going to do in Print Composer is we're going to go up to the View menu and turn on the grid. That You see the little dots there, as well as Snap to Grid. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the paper size. I've made some measurements to know exactly how big my map should be in order to get three of them on this particular canvas. Um, and so you can see the dots there. So now we'll go ahead and add our first map. We'll go up to the Add Map button up in the, the top. Left click and, and drag our mouse. Um, and I've counted off the number of dots. And again, I've sort of selected the paper size based off what I, I know and, and how big the map's going to be, how many maps, and, and the space in between them. Um, as I just click to set to the map extent here. Um, I'm also just going to change the scale a little bit, um, just to make the image uh, fill up uh, uh, more of the individual maps. So the next step is very key. I'm going to go over to the right hand side and lock the layers for this map before I copy and paste the map to make a, another one. So I'm going to go up to edit and copy. Um, you can also hit control C to copy and control V to paste and voila, there's an equal size map that we can pop right next to that one. Um, but it has the same uh, map as the one on the left. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and click the unlock layers, go back to my map canvas, um, change the layer, open up Print Composer again, and hit the refresh button. And so now you'll see a false color image and then we'll lock the layers for this map. So just to finish off our map series, we'll add one more band combination. And again, we'll copy and paste, having locked the layer first. Um, then we'll click uh, to unlock the layer. Um, and whoops, I didn't mean to hit the, uh, the refresh button. We have to change the layers first. Um, so we'll, we'll look at another band combination. And again, this is running slow because I'm also recording video at the same time. Um, and so now we'll hit the refresh button and we'll see that last layer combination um, pop up. Lastly, we'll just take a quick look at the Atlas function in Print Composer. An Atlas is basically a collection of maps. In this case, we're going to iterate over a common geographic unit um, to basically repeat or automate map production. Um, this is also known as creating a map book or data-driven pages in ArcGIS. Um, this helps to save time and also helps maps give a consistent look and feel. In this example, we'll look at our presidential election map with results by county um, from the last time. Um, so in this case, um, I've added a layer, battleground states. So the dark, thick black outline you see are states that were considered battleground states by political pundits and, and news outlets. And the circles, whether uh, blue in this case, represent the margin of victory by Obama and red for Romney. Um, so we'll open up Print Composer and we'll enter a title for our project. We'll go ahead and add our map to the canvas.
then we'll head on over. Um, we'll just, well, didn't mean to do that. We'll actually head on over to the composition tab after, um, but first we'll click controlled by Atlas so that um, the print composer knows that we're making an Atlas. Um, and notice the different options in terms of scale here um, that you can select. Um, and then we'll go over to Atlas Generation. Um, we'll select the layer that's going to control how our Atlas or map book is generated. And whoop, let me just check the, the layer name real quick. Yeah, it's the right layer. Um, so again, um, the next thing is to choose a field to filter by. In this case, we want to produce a map book by state. So we're going to choose uh, the field state. Um, and then we're also going to sort the map book by state um, so that it will be um, sorted alphabetically. Um, then we'll click preview the atlas and we're taken to the first battleground state. Um, and then we can click forward and back. Um, so here's Florida and the margin of victory um, by county for Obama and Romney and so forth. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe or like this video and feel free to leave comments in the comment section below.